My name is Avis Ridley Thomas, and I'm the director of Days of Dialogue. And the reason why I've come to this particular conference is that I retired as the founding director of the Los Angeles City Attorney's Dispute Resolution Program. And I did that about a year and a half ago. Uh, and when I retired, I realized that I had been in an area of work that was wonderful and lifelong and had no drawbacks with the exception of the bureaucracy of my organization. I had 2,000 volunteers that we trained over the years as community mediators and facilitators. And I tried to stay in touch with those volunteers so that we could explore all of these new possibilities outside of that very limiting framework of that bureaucracy. And so now I am doing days of dialogue and teaching um, peer mediation training trainers at USC and UCLA. And what they're doing is then going into local schools to teach children peer mediation skills and uh, establish those schools as community mediation centers if that's what the schools really wish to do. If they don't, they can just take whatever tools we have to provide and use them in ways they deem appropriate. My background uh, led me to a dialogue and mediation because I was such a hell raiser. Uh, that I knew that I needed to engage more constructively with other human beings. That was essential for me to grow old happily. That's how I saw it. And I, I'm so glad that this area of work found me because I know I was running from it. Uh, and I know that I needed it. I know that I needed it uh, personally. I am currently working on a dialogues that involve such things as creating a better future one involving uh, students who are in juvenile uh, probation camps and juvenile halls, which are less restrictive facilities. When we uh, schedule days of dialogue these days, we've evolved from exclusively using the study circles approach. And so we would have uh, large groups of people come and break into small sessions to uh, a, an approach now involving the audience polling technology uh, and uh, gathering the discussion information and putting it on the screen so that uh, people can see uh, who's in the room and, and uh, what their opinions are of the various topics that we are discussing. Uh, and so we have grown, now we do uh, a, a um, film at the beginning of each uh, dialogue to kind of capture the essence of the subject matter. Um, however, we, we will still on occasion just simply do the sit down in small circles with a discussion guide and, and uh, have a talk as well. Dialogue and deliberation offers something that we rarely get uh, as um, citizens in the United States, and that's an opportunity to be heard and our opinion to be acknowledged and recognized on uh, a number of levels. Wherever we take that dialogue, people uh, feel better about their participation in whatever uh, subject we are discussing, whatever matter we are dealing with. Dialogue gives you the opportunity to be half right and that that be okay, uh, completely wrong and that that's, that's okay. And if you just continue the process, you can find a way to be right, to be 100% with oneself and one's community and giving yourself the opportunity to change if you would like to just because you state a position starting out doesn't mean you have to stick with that. Uh, it does not mean you have to alienate someone else in the expression of your opinion or uh, because you may disagree with them in the expression of theirs. Uh, so I'm, I'm uh, for letting people have the appropriate forum for whatever their needs are in, uh, in having dialogue. So the one coming up, I'm especially excited about because I'm helping to create this opportunity for uh, our community to think about ending child sexual abuse. 
And this has been, you know, just a, a terrible, wrenching issue that we just over and over again, scandal after scandal, keep wondering why is this continuing and how can we end this? And so I'm really excited about giving people the opportunity to engage in a discussion about how to end child sexual abuse. I think it's accurate that 99% of Americans are unlikely to have heard of dialogue and deliberation at this point. And I think that, that that means that we just have to keep going at it. Those of us who know about it, we spread the word by whatever means we have available to us. We're still in the very early ages uh, here of, uh, in the process of developing this whole community, this, this movement about dialogue and deliberation. One thing that I am delighted to know is about the arc of human history. That is where we started out as human beings and where we are now and what it actually takes to move history uh, forward in a positive way is mostly trial and error by us human beings. And so the research scientists having demystified that process for me, I am very hopeful that we will incorporate much better means of interacting with one another, of uh, engaging our uh, political or governmental institutions. We are just getting better, and we may take small steps in that process, and it is very, very difficult to watch change being born. But I am, I'm hopeful, and I have no doubt that we will use this and other means to, to make our societies just much, much better places. Uh, in the future in terms of government and uh, our collective decision making. I'm glad to be here uh, at the early part. It's always fascinating to watch something being born. Uh, and we will have the opportunity, I, I have no doubt that uh, we will have the opportunity to see this grow and begin to change our, our nation. We're just uh, taking our baby steps right now. Uh, and I'm just delighted to celebrate this milestone in, in our history and to celebrate these people who've been working so hard to make this happen. <laughs>